Good morning, friends. It is the continuation of the uh, previous video only. That is the viral hemorrhagic fever. So in this, we will learn about in detail what all infection can lead to this condition. So one is the dengue. So dengue is caused by the dengue virus. Mainly the four type of dengue virus is circulating. That is the one, two, three, four, five has also been isolated in uh, 2013. And uh, this virus is being transmitted by the mosquito that is the Aedes aegypti from person to person. The extrinsic incubation period is 8 to 10 days. And other than human beings, there is no other vertebrate host. So how the patient of dengue comes? That is, there will be a history of uh, fever. Then along with that, there can be the history of uh, body ache, malaise and headache. So this headache feature is very important. Then there is a complaint of retrobulbar pain. So pain in the back and the limbs that means the break bone fever is also being called for this disease. Lymphadenopathy, maculopapular rash and fever is typically biphasic. Now, what do you mean by uh, biphasic? That means once there will be a phase of, uh, uh, like I have told you in the pathogenesis, that there is primary viremia and then secondary viremia. So, when the uh, virus first enters into the blood, then there will be a uh, fever. And when again, uh, then it goes to the reticular endothelial system, then again to the blood, and it is a secondary viremia. So, again, the peak of the fever will come. So, once there will be a uh, period of fever, then it will subside, then again the fever will come. So at that time, the complications can occur. So it is very important to keep a watch on this. Now, there can be uh, three presentation in case of the dengue. Most commonly is the classical dengue. And second is the dengue hemorrhagic fever. If the patient lands up in the complication of uh, hemorrhage and third is the dengue shock syndrome so in classical dengue the all the features which i have mentioned in the previous slide so they are the common symptoms of dengue and that is the most common presentation also but sometimes the patient may land up in the complications so one is the hemorrhagic fever where the patient will have the high grade fever along with that the platelet count is less that is it is uh, less than uh, one lakh per uh, mm cube and there will be a uh, chance of hepatomegaly and hematocrit. So platelet fall down and the raised in the hematocrit value that is more than uh, that will be raised by 20%. And there will be some manifestation of hemorrhage. Like either there may be a spontaneous bleeding uh, from your uh, nose, mouth, gums or there could be a positive tourniquet test. So in this tourniquet test, there will be more than 20 patechae uh, per uh, per square inch area of the cubital fossa. So that is you can uh, the clinician can uh, check for this tourniquet test whether the patient is uh, maybe having the risk of complication or they can be the spontaneous bleeding. And the third is the most complicated case that is the patient will end up in the shock. So how will you identify the shock condition that is either the pulse is weak or it is uh, rapid. And the pulse pressure is less than 20 mmHg and uh, they will be cold and clammy skin. Now, uh, it has been said like this complication like hemorrhagic fever or shock syndrome, they have been usually been seen in those conditions where the person who has been infected with one serotype, the next time he has been infected with the another serotype. So the person who has been infected previously, they are more prone for this complication. And why, uh, why this situation develop? It is being said that some hypersensitivity reaction may occur. Means that is uh, once there is an infection with one serotype, it will result in two type of antibodies formation. One are the protective antibodies or neutralizing antibody that will be formed against that serotype which has infected the person and to the other serotype there will be 
non neutralizing or non protective antibody now these non protective antibody which have been formed other uh, against the other serotype so once if the patient will get infection with another serotype in future so these non neutralizing antibody will protect those serotypes and that will result in some immunological reaction that will can lead to the this complication like bleeding or in the shock now the dengue case classification that is based on the severity so that was uh, used in the past when we classify dengue as classical or hemorrhagic or shock syndrome but in 2009 the who has changed its uh, classification to one is the dengue with or without warning sign another is the severe dengue so dengue with or without warning sign that is criteria is that either there is a probable dengue or there are warning sign probable dengue means you have uh, all the symptom like fever rash uh, your tourniquet test positive body ache hai retro bulb pain hai and uh, lab confirmed dengue means if you have uh, gone for the test like ns1 or for the igm if it is coming positive then it is the lab confirmed dengue then warning signs we will look for the the dengue the person is dengue positive warning signs are present or not so what are the warning sign that is the abdominal pain or tenderness then mucosal bleeding and if fluid accumulation liver enlargement or increase in the hematocrit value then comes the severe dengue so what is the severe dengue when there is a plasma leakage occurs or there is some bleeding occurs or if there is any organ impairment that means a patient will end up in the shock if there is a plasma leakage uh, or there could be ARDS that is the respiratory distress syndrome severe bleeding or the organ involvement now how we can diagnose these cases of dengue that is on the basis of history uh, you can have an idea for this that is uh, having this fever with this and so we are depending upon uh, uh, you have to ask for what is the day of fever because it is very important what test we can write for the uh, patient that is if it is one to five day of the fever we will go for the antigen detection if it is more than that we will go for the antibody detection so among the antibody it is the igm initially uh, the rapid car tests were being uh, done for checking for ns1 antigen which is uh, for detecting the antigen detection but in 2016 the guidelines have been changed and it has been said that if it comes positive by the rapid card you have to confirm it with the elisa only then it will be confirmed case so ig for igm also igg also rapid card that is based on immunochromatographic tests are available but you have to confirm it with the elisa also uh, so uh, it is very important to remember one to five day it is for ns1 antigen you if you want to go uh, either for the rapid test then you have to confirm with elisa or directly go for the elisa after five day you will go for the igm then you can also go for the isolation of the virus that is using the cell lines uh, human cell lines are available mouse cell line that is ap61 and mosquito cell line that is c636 so in the cell lines you can inoculate the sample and you can isolate the virus or you can uh, also isolate it in the animal that is directly in the inoculation in the mosquitoes in the cerebral and then there is molecular techniques now vaccine so license for human use since 2015 it is a chimeric vaccine and chimeric vaccine means that this vaccine has been made with the help of another vector that is the yellow fever uh, vector has been taken and this dengue genes dengue virus gene has been inserted into it so it is a live attenuated tetravalent dengue vaccine so it is a chimeric vaccine where we are uh, combining yellow fever with dengue and live attenuated it is tetravalent vaccine known is uh, the name is the dengue vaccine so it uses the live attenuated yellow fever 17d virus as the vaccine vector it is given in 9 to 45 years of age and 
three injections of 0.5 ml is administered subcutaneously six months of interval. Then comes the next virus is the chikungunya virus. So this virus is also a little bit similar to the dengue. In uh, the common feature is that fever is there and also the this bone pain. But it is very more defined, more chronic in case of the chikungunya. So uh, this is also being transmitted from uh, by means of Aedes aegypti mosquito only. The name chikungunya means the body is doubled up. That means so severe pain are in the joints that the body has been doubled up. So first reported cases in Africa, then it comes to Asia also. And in India first time, along with the dengue, it caused an extensive epidemic in Calcutta, Madras and other areas. Then after 1973 to 2005, there was not a single case of this and this disease was clinically cursion and there were no outbreak. Then comes the re-emergence. Re-emergence means once the, uh, these uh, new cases of any infection are not coming for many years and then suddenly it again appearing again. It is a re-emergence. Either some uh, variation occurs in that or some changes in the host or in the vector. So that will lead to the bring up of that disease again in the society. So in 2005, chikungunya re-emerged in reunion island of Indian Ocean. And new mutation occurred that is even to A226 way. So 100 times it is more infective to Aedes mosquito. Now this new variant is 100 times more infective to the Aedes albopictus mosquito. And it is endemic in several states like Karnataka, Maharashtra and Gujarat. So what are the symptoms? That is sudden onset of fever, crippling joint pains, lymphadenopathy and conjunctivitis. So very important are the severe joint pain. A maculopapular rash is also common. Some show hemorrhagic manifestations. The fever is typically biphasic, like uh, we have noted in the dengue also, and vector we already know, Aedes mosquito. So we can isolate this uh, virus in the mosquito cell lines, or we can go for IgM, or in the fourfold rise of titer of IgG. Very important is that is the macalizer or the mulizer is being preferred for chikungunya virus. Another thing that is the molecular methods. Then third is the KFT that is the Kyasana Roar Forest Disease. It is a hemorrhagic uh, fever which was found in the Karnataka state. So in 1957, several dead monkeys have been noted and they were present in the Shimoga district in Karnataka in the forest. So on the name of this forest only this disease has been named Kyasana Roar Forest Disease. So a severe prostatic illness has been noted in the villages in that area. So what was the symptom? That is there is a fever, visceral onset, headache, conjunctivitis, myalgia and severe presentation, severe prostration. So some may also develop a hemorrhagic condition into the skin, mucosa and viscera. Locally it is being said as the monkey fever because uh, they have noted the dead monkeys. So in infection in the monkey that led to the fatal disease. So they are only the amplifier host. Ticks. So in the KFD ticks are acting as a reservoir. So there is no vaccine has been found to protect against this disease. A uh, killed vaccine has been prepared which have been still in the trial. It appeared to provide some degree of protection. Then comes the Ebola virus. So Ebola virus uh, belongs to the family Phylloviridae, and this family contains two antigenically distinct uh, genera that is the Ebola virus and the Marburg virus. Both are very important. Both can cause the hemorrhagic fever. And they both come under the uh, biosafety level 4 category virus. That means the most deadliest. There is no, uh, they cause mortality very faster. And the spreading rate is also very high. Difficult to diagnose. 
and the motility is very fast. So uh, for these, when we process these viruses, Ebola and Marburg, we need uh, biosafety cabinets that is of level 3, that is the highest level. So that is very important. Uh, it can rapidly spread to any lab worker who are working there. So these Ebola virus, they are long filamentous thread, 82,000 nanometer, and they are highly fatal. That is the 25 to 90% of the mortality rate that is very high. So this has become a global threat and the outbreak occurred in 2014, declared by WHO as the emergency of international concern. So its outbreak occurred in the Dem Democratic Republic of the Congo. Uh, in 11 outbreaks have been reported, the most recent in 2020. But there is no confirmed case from India yet. The largest outbreak occurred from 2014 to 2016. And many cases like 28,000 cases have been reported with almost 40% mortality. Three primary countries which have been affected most were the Guinea, Libya and Sierra Leone. So uh, what were the suspected infected animal? That was the fruit bat or the primates. Human to human transmission is very common, direct contact and healthcare worker, close contact, family all are at risk. Incubation period is 2 to 12 days. Clinical feature that is the patient suffering from that having the symptom fever, headache, muscle pain, sore throat, abdominal pain, vomiting, and diarrhea. They can be diffused with the metas, pepper rash, petechiae. Achimosis, so they can be bleeding, which can lead to the shock and the death. So that is very important why it has been kept under the viral hemorrhagic fever. Mortality, the case fatality rate is around 50%. How we can diagnose that is the serum antibody detection, antigen detection, molecular methods. Usually we go for the molecular method because it has a very uh, high mortality rate electron microscopy or the virus isolation in the cell lines. Treatment for this, uh, no particular treatment is there, no particular vaccine is there. You can give only the symptomatic treatment for that rehydration and symptomatic treatment. Then comes the Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. It is tick-borne virus. It is tick-borne virus. It is a zoonotic disease and it is endemic in Africa. In India, few cases have been reported from Gujarat in 2011 and 13. People were found to be effective for it. And comes the genus Hunter virus, which causes the Hunter virus fever with renal syndrome. Now, this Hunter uh, virus infection, that is mainly uh, this virus present in the rodents, that is the field mice, and they are the major host. Ratus and Ratus bivergicals, Perseol and Vols. So it causes the hunter virus permis syndrome. It also involves the kidney also, but it can cause the more important the permis syndrome, where the facial fever, malice, myalgia, gastrointestinal symptom, and pulmonary involvement with radiological picture of pulmonary edema. They could be tachypenia, tachycardia, hypotension, and hypoxia. So that is all for the viral hemorrhagic fever. Uh, if you have any doubt uh, regarding that or the previous, you can ask me in the comment section. All the questions, all the queries are welcome. Uh, thank you very much for paying attention.